Hey what's going on guys, Tanmay here for Simple Snippets and in this video tutorial we are going to be learning the concept of functions in C++ programming. So in the previous two tutorials we saw the concept of pointers and we also saw an application that is dynamic memory allocation. So if you have missed those videos you can check them out. So coming back to functions. Now functions is a very important topic in terms of this procedural oriented paradigm of C++ programming and it is being implemented in almost all other programming languages. So there is just a little bit of difference in syntax, however functions exist in almost all all the high level programming languages. So it is very important for you to understand this concept. So with that being said, let's get started. So what are functions? So let me just read out the definition and we'll try to understand by taking an example as well. So a function in C++ is a group of program statements with a unique name that performs a specific task. So okay, it is a group of program statements that has been given a unique name by us or some of them are predefined and the function is defined such in such a way that is it performs specific task. So why are functions used? So functions are used to provide modularity and reusability to a program. So those are the ma major advantages of a function. By default, every C++ program execution starts from the main function. So this is something that you already know because we've been programming a lot of different programs in C++ and depending on whether a function is predefined or created by user that is us there are two types that is library slash predefined functions and user defined functions so that is very obvious so this was a little bit about the theory of functions so what exactly happens in the practical scenario when the program contains a function and how does it execute so let's try to visualize it in an example okay so as you can see on the screen we have a scenario wherein we have a program so here we go you see the main function. So this is where the program starts. So this is how the program goes. The execution of the program runs. So there's a start, then we have the main function and the execution starts off with the first line of code. You can see I have mentioned over here slash slash and the code. So this is the first line. At the second line, we have a function call. So this is basically called a function call. And this my function with those brackets or round, round braces is actually the function name. And I'll explain you what and how to go about the syntax of a function. But right now, just assume that this is a function. And then we have that function definition over here with the function body inside which we have some code and then we again have the normal execution of our code. So according to the definition a function is a group of program statements right. So we have a function whose name is my function and this is basically the syntax and we'll come to the syntax as well. Right now just take an example that the name of the function is my function and it has certain statements program statements of its own. So it's performing certain tasks say for example our function is going to calculate or compute larger number of two numbers. So that's that's the function that is going to be performed by our function. So it is doing that and then we have our normal code. So what exactly is happening is when the program executes it's executed line by line so at the second line the control is transferred from the main function to our user defined function then this function is executed and again the control is transferred back to the main function and then the code inside the main function continues to execute and then the program ends so this is known as control transfer that happens whenever there is a function call inside the main function so from the main function the control is transferred to the calling function after the execution of that user defined function or predefined function, the control is again transferred back to the main function till the main function completes its execution and the program is terminated. So this is how things work in function. This is how the scenario happens in the backend. So why would you need functions? As I mentioned, it helps in modularity and reusability. So for example, you have a code, for example, you have main function and you, you want to calculate larger largest number out of two. So you'll write some piece of code. Say for example, the line of code is four. So in these four lines of code, you are computing the largest out of two numbers, but you want to perform this task at least five times. So every time you have to again write those four lines of code. So this increases the size of your program and it also makes it a little bit difficult to understand. Now instead of that what you can do is you create one function, you write those four lines of codes inside that function and you just call that function. So just by a single line of code you eliminate that tedious task of writing the four lines of code again and again. So just by writing my function once you are essentially calling these four lines of code using one line of code. So this is why reusability comes into picture and then it gives you a modular approach. So for example, some tasks are not exactly needed every time. So they can be separated and made as a modular approach by writing them in those functions. So these are the some of the advantages of functions. These are the basic advantages of functions and let's try to see the syntax of functions. So as you can see on the screen, the first three lines is the syntax of the of a typical function. 
the first part is the return type so i also specified the components of a c++ function so the first one is a return type i'll explain to you what return type is then we have the function name that is the unique name that we give to our function then we have a parameter list then we have opening and closing curly braces and inside that we have the body of the function so the first entire line that is return type function name and parameter list excluding this curly brace is known as the signature of the function just remember right now it, it is known as a signature and i'll tell you what exactly it means and everything starting from the curly braces to the ending curly braces is known as the body of the function so basically these are two parts of a function and i'll explain you what both of them mean or why do you need to address them differently so right now let's see what return type is so a function may return a value the return type is the data type of the value of the function that it returns so some functions perform operation without returning a value in this case the return type is the keyword void so let me just explain to you with our same example so what would the return type mean say for example you want to calculate largest of two numbers so you'll have to pass those numbers inside those function right so you have int a and b so what you'll do is you'll pass that in this function as parameters a comma b so now you have two integers you've taken the value of these integers from user so what you'll do is you'll say my function so i'll write my f u n c and inside this function you'll pass these values a comma b so these are the parameters that we were discussing about the parameter list now the this a and b will be passed on to the function over here and these are integer types so this would be int a and b now there would be some if condition inside this code which will see if a is greater than b we would have a last return statement so if a is greater we will say return a else return b so this return is what the return type of that function is so if it is a integer value we have to say int if it is a float we have to say float if it is a double we have to say double and it would be the value that is going to be returned by the function when the function is complete with the execution so that value can be stored in another variable int c is equal to my f u n c and then we pass the values again so i'll show you that code exactly how it works so for your better understanding we'll actually write a code which would complete this functionality so this is where the return type comes into picture and it would be more clear when we actually see the code then we have the function name so the function name is what uniquely identifies it and we use it when we actually call the function inside the main function so in in our example it was my function as the name so the name of the function was my function it has to be unique in nature and lastly as i told you the first line that is return type function name and parameter list is known as the function signature okay so this was about the theoretical aspect as well as what happens when a function is called why we need a function and what are the benefits so let's try to actually practically implement a program which would calculate larger number out of two numbers so we'll take two numbers from user two integer values from user and we'll figure out which one is the greater number and we'll try to print that out so let's get started so i have my dev c++ id opened up and i have created a new file which i will save as cpp and i have already written down few things that are essential that is the hash include iostream.h header file using namespace standard int main and return zero so this is something that is predefined and required when we actually go ahead and write a c++ program so quickly open up your id and write down this code and i would recommend that you type it out along with me because that is the best way to learn programming i've been telling this throughout this tutorial series okay so according to our problem we are going to create a program which will take two integer variables from user so let me just define two integer variables i'll say int a comma b then i'll print a message saying enter two numbers to find the greatest and l and i'll take those numbers from the user okay now i have to create a function so let me just go ahead and type it out so when we create a function we create outside the main function you can create it above the main function or below so depending upon where you create the function we, there is a small change so i'll explain to you what it is so what we are going to do is we are going to create a function named maximum and it would return an integer value so i'll say int maximum and it will take two parameters both of them as integer values so i'll say int x comma int y so this is the signature basically and i'll now create the body i'll say if x greater than y return x else return y okay so what exactly is happening over here let me just finally write down the code over here i'll say one more variable int c is equal to maximum of a comma b 
Okay, so this is our function name maximum. It is going to return an integer value. So that is why we have declared its return type as int. And the reason why it is going to return is we have a statement over here which says return x else return y, which means that our function is going to compute the greatest value out of the two that is being passed as parameters and is going to return back the greatest value. So when it is going to return, there has to be some variable of the same type that would hold that value. So that's why I created third variable int c, which is going to capture the returned value from this function. And these are the parameters that are going to be passed. So a and b is something that we are taking as an input from user. We are passing it as parameters in the function. So a and b correspond to x and y over here. So these x and y are just aliases for these a and b and they exist only inside this function. So basically a corresponds to x and b corresponds to y. Here we are just having a if else control structure and we are returning the greatest value. So this returned value is captured inside this c. So let me just save this and I'll say cpp func that is cpp function dot cpp. Now that we have captured the greatest we have to print it out right. So let me just copy this and paste it and I'll say greatest value is and the value would be C. So there is just one small issue over here. Now remember whenever program runs or compiler compiles this code, it would start from the first line that is this line and it would go line by line. So when it comes on this line that is line number 14, it sees this function maximum. Now it will check whether it is predefined or user defined. Now since it is user defined, it needs a definition. That is it needs to know where the body of this function is, where the signature of this function is. But since we are on line 14th, while the compiler is on line 14th, it has not still reached 18th line. Which means that the compiler does not know that there exists a function which is over here. So at this line it would give us an error. Now to in order to ensure that this doesn't happen, we have to perform a forward declaration which essentially means that we need to tell the compiler that we have a function which is going to be looking like this. So that is the reason why we have to just write down the function signature at top of the main function. So I would say int maximum, I'll say int a comma int b and I'll say semicolon. So this is known as the signature of the function and it is also known as forward declaration. So when the compiler is compiling this code and it is on line 7, it knows ki there exists a function which has a return type integer which name is maximum and it has two parameters which both are integers. So it does not need the body because it already knows ki there exists a user defined function. So when it comes on this line, it knows that this function exists somewhere below and then it would not give us an error. So to verify this, let's try to comment this out and try to run the function and let's try to execute the program. I'll say compile and run and there you go. It is telling us that error maximum was not declared in this scope, which means that it is not getting the definition or the body of the function. So let's try to uncomment this, save this and compile and execute and I'm sure it would run. So there you go. It ran successfully. It is asking me to enter two numbers. So I'll say four and five and it's saying greatest value is five. So this is how we successfully performed or implemented the code for functions. So suppose if you don't want this part, what you can do is you can declare this entire function and define this function at the top that is before the main function. So when the compiler goes through compiling this entire code, it has already compiled this 12 lines of code and then it goes to the main function. So it already knows that there exists a function which is user defined and this is the signature as well as the body. So I hope now you understand what a function signature is, which is this line. This is the function body. This is known as forward declaration that we just did. And this entire part is known as the function definition. Definition which means that we define what exactly is happening in the function. This line of code is known as function call. Which means that we are calling out a user defined function or a function which is going to do some task. And in this case it is going to calculate the maximum out of two numbers and going to return a value which is of integer data type. That is the reason why we created an integer variable c which captures that maximum value and then we print it out. So now what we can do is we can directly print out another value. So I'll say c out another greatest value out of 5, 6 or 5,6 is and I'll say maximum of 5,6. So instead of storing the value in a third variable, I'm directly printing it out and I'm calling the function over here again. So this is how reusability helps us because just by writing one line or just by writing the function name, I'm essentially calling out these four lines. So I don't need to type it out again and again. 
and here I'm hard coding these values so I'm not taking it from user so let's see how it goes I'll say compile and run it would ask for numbers but it would print something else so another greatest value out of 5 and 6 is 6 so this is one another way of using a function now suppose there might be a case where your function is not going to return any value for example you want a function which is just going to print hello world which is not going to return any value so in that case when there is nothing to be returned from a function the return type is supposed to be void so I'll say print message also it is not taking any parameters so the parameter list is not existing over here and in the curly brackets I'll say C out hello world that's it so this is our second function let me just erase all these lines out and here instead of writing this line C out hello world I'll just say print message and this would get our job done so let me just try and execute this so there you go you got the message hello world so this was a very simple example but there would be cases wherein you don't need to return any value and you need to do a lot of work so there would be like 100 lines of code inside this function and then just by calling out the function you perform it over and over again which would make your code reusable or which would make that function reusable so these I just gave you two examples so now the functions can also be categorized as parameterized or non-parameterized so wherever we pass in parameters it is known as parameterized so this was one example and if there are no parameters it is called as non-parameterized there are certain other variations of functions and types of functions depending upon how they work or what they do and we'll see them in further tutorials as well so that's it for this video guys I hope you understood the concept of functions why we need functions what are its benefits and what happens behind the scenes and and we also saw a practical example wherein we wrote a code to calculate the maximum out of two numbers using functions so if you have any doubts or queries you can always put them in the comment section if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel peace